What's going on guys? Welcome to today's video. So the Canon EOS R5 has been everything that people have been talking about lately. YouTubers have been blasting out content, throwing it in your face about it. And I myself am included in that group. That's the only thing that people have been talking about as of late. And especially with Canon's announcement for the video specs of this camera, what we're gonna be seeing in it. There are still a few unanswered questions. For the most part, that camera has been unveiled to us uh, and we kind of know what to expect generally. Every rumor site has been fangirling over this camera and quite frankly, I'm a little bit sick of hearing about it. So don't worry, this is not gonna be another video gushing about the R5 if you wanna see something more like that. You guys can click on the video right here uh, and that's talking about the specs of the EOS R5 and what you guys can expect from that camera. But today we're talking more in the realms of the Canon EOS R6. This is kind of the little brother of the R5. It's like the R5 is the popular kid at school. He's the high school teenager got the cool kicks and then the R6 is more of like that third grade younger brother who's in the chess club um, kind of on the sidelines and actually I was in the chess club when I was in high school so I guess that's worse than being in the chess club when you're in third grade you get a free pass uh, for being in third grade high school you really don't I think there are a lot of things about this camera that do make it really interesting to me personally uh, and p potentially to you guys especially if you're not in the super pro realm of videography or photography because you guys got to remember that these are hybrid cameras meaning that they excel in video and they can take some pretty stunning photos as well so don't worry about having to decide between one or the other that's mostly the decision between a DSLR and a cinema camera unless we're talking about the 1DX Mark III which is kind of a hybrid camera in itself um, but that is a discussion for a completely entirely different video um, and we're not going to talk about that right here so as far as dates go this camera is going to be expected to be announced sometime around May and that's coming up pretty soon I think it's interesting that Canon is deciding to launch out uh, at least the information about both of these cameras at the same exact time or around the same time. We're also expecting to hear the official announcement from Canon on the EOS R5 in May as well, where they're gonna completely unveil it uh, and show it to us. But I don't think that's the case with the R6. I think it will be kind of like casually announced in May and then officially later, uh, the announcements of things. I don't watch them, so I don't know exactly what they do there. I watch people who watch them. So I like, I watch a dude who's watching it. It's really weird. The disappointing thing is that both the R5 and R6 won't be shipping uh, for quite some time. So if you do have your eyes on like an EOS R, I would recommend you to get one just because it's a phenomenal and stunning camera. That's what we're shooting on right now. I love it. And it certainly can tide you over for the meantime until the R5 and R6 are released officially. Running down some of the specs for you guys, it's got a very unimpressive sensor, which is 20 megapixels. And so that's kind of in the same realm as the 1DX Mark III. People have thought, hey, maybe the EOS R6 is gonna have the same sensor as the 1DX Mark III. That's not the case. It's gonna be a different sensor. So that means it could be either worse in low light or better in low light. And since the 1DX Mark III costs almost $7,000, I'm gonna assume that the entry level EOS R6 is gonna be probably a little worse in low light, but it is 20 megapixels, so that could potentially give it an advantage over the EOS R5 coming in at 45 megapixels. The R6 is gonna have that dual IBIS system where you can use it in the camera with the sensor being physically able to shift around and also in conjunction with your lenses only to be used with RF glass, I believe. If that changes, oh man, I would be so excited because I have the only EF glass that I have is IS and I've only got EF glass, so that's kind of the position that I'm in. I did have an RF 24 to 105, but that got stolen. I shipped it off, the dude canceled on me, so then I requested for it to be shipped back. And then both the camera and the lens that I sent in the mail disappeared. Uh, so that makes me very upset. There goes, you know, $1,500 down the drain. Uh, and yes, so to answer the spec question, you guys have been wondering about this camera. The R6 is going to be a significant step down from the R5 in terms of capabilities, even though five is less than six, the six will be less than the five. I mean, it's an entry level camera, similar to how the EOS R was positioned uh, and the R5 is going to be marketed as that pro level camera. Now, I do think that the R6 can be used by professionals, absolutely. And it can be also pushed in that prosumer market. 
Uh, and I, I don't think that the R5 is going to be worth it for me. And there are some things that I will need to be seeing in the R6 um, if I'm going to consider picking it up. So let's just run down what is listed officially, well, <laughs> unofficially on Canon Rumors for you guys. So along with that 20 megapixel full frame CMOS sensor, it's gonna be having the IBIS. Uh, as far as the photography side goes, you're gonna be able to accomplish 12 frames per second with the mechanical shutter and 20 frames per second using the electronic shutter. So that's pretty good uh, as far as speed go you can definitely use it as a sports photography camera if you're interested in doing that so you shouldn't have to worry in the photo realm this is gonna be a pretty versatile camera three specs that really excite me are that it's rumored to have 4k 60 FPS that's gonna be pretty great it's gonna have full HD at 120 FPS for some great smooth slow motion that's one of the things that I was really disappointed in with the EOS R is not having 1080p at 120 frames per second who knows though the R6 could just bump out their audio and their autofocus capabilities, kind of like how they did with the M6 Mark II, um, but that wouldn't bother me too much because um, anyone who's publishing content at 120 frames per second should not do that. Uh, it's gonna have dual card slots, so yes, this is gonna make it more geared towards the professional shooters, especially like wedding photographers, or people who won't get a second shot at being able to replicate a, a certain scene or a certain photo. I don't know, I think dual card slots are overhyped. Who knows, uh, it might have a CF Express card and the UHS-2, kind of like the EOS R5, but since it's not filming or recording at these crazy speeds like 8K RAW or 4K 120 FPS, I don't think it's gonna be needing to take advantage of CF Express cards, so it's probably gonna have just dual UHS-2 slots, which would be perfectly fine by me because then I don't have to go out and buy any CF Express cards because I, I don't have any. It's not really useful for me right now. It's not gonna have that top-down screen on the top, kind of like the EOS R does. I actually kind of like that thing, and I always find myself looking at the screen instead of the top-down screen, so I, I don't use it, but it does look pretty cool. It's the little things in a camera that really make you fall in love with it. I don't know. Comment at me if you guys agree with that. I have a lower resolution EVF than the EOS R5 and also a lower resolution screen than the EOS R5. Build quality not as good as the EOS R5. So it's probably just gonna be made from some cheaper materials and it might not feel as good as the EOS R5, but if the build quality is comparable to the EOS R, which it should be because they'll be positioned at the same price point, I would assume, then I'm not gonna be disappointed in that at all. You're gonna have a new battery, so your LPE6Ns will be rendered useless. That's good to hear, because I've got five of them, and it is assumed to be launched in June of 2020. So, those are the numbers, those are what we got. Um, that's kind of exciting, that definitely opens the door for conversation to be had about this camera. I'm excited, and one thing that's gonna really push me to buy this, or to not buy this, I was looking online um, to get some accessories for my EOS R and that is the new Metabones Speed Booster, which will take that 4K crop from being a 1.74 times, and it will reduce that to a 1.2, I'm really bad at math. It'll reduce it significantly by 0.71 times. And then I was also looking at getting the Atomos Ninja 5 recorder, and that allows you to record 10-bit 4K externally. Can't get 10-bit in 1080p, um, so that's kind of a bummer, but it allows you to get 10-bit in a pretty great codex, which is the ProRes. And so even though it's guaranteed that the EOS R6 is not gonna be able to record internally in ProRes, that's not a huge turnoff for me because I'm upgrading my laptop to something that can handle like an H.265 format. Um, and even though the codex, the recording capabilities as far as internals go, aren't released or aren't talked about yet, um, the things that are really gonna make me buy into this camera or not are, will it be able to replace those two accessories for me? Um, because then, if I were to sell off my EOS R, um, for the same price as me buying the Atomos Ninja 5 uh, and the accessories that come along with that, like the battery, the storage SSD system, cables, mounts, etc., and then the speed booster, that extra cost, um, in addition to what I could sell the EOS R for, will pretty much break me even um, in order to get the EOS R6. But in order to do that, the EOS R6 is gonna need to have a no crop in 4K, which uh, I'm kind of expecting that. Since Canon's given us that bone with the R5 not having any crop in 8K, so they've definitely figured out how to give you no crop high resolution video. And also along with that, it's gonna have to be able to record in 10-bit 422 internally um, in 4K. If it can do 10-bit and 1080p even, I would be totally happy with that. And that would push me to buy that camera. Yeah, there's a lot to talk about and a lot to think about 
when we're looking at this camera. Can you not even see it? Oh man, that's kind of disappointing. I just realized that like for most of this video, you couldn't see that little music note light I got. I hope you guys like it. Just adds a nice little touch in the background. I don't know. Uh, my girlfriend pointed out to me that it looks like the TikTok sign, so that kind of made me want to just smash it with a sledgehammer. By the way, follow me on TikTok if you don't already. But what are you guys most excited for with the EOS R6? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. I'm excited to hear the release of this and just to get more information about this camera, kind of like how we've been seeing with the EOS R5, with Canon putting out and dropping little details uh, every few months. So it's like, it's the camera strip tease. So I'm excited to see more about this camera. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks again, guys, and we'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe.